Hi, welcome to Furniture on the Men. I'm Joe Lorario. And I'm Ed Feldman. Tell me, are you as tired of watching us carry this thing in as we are tired of carrying it? All that's going to change. We're going to fix it up, make it look neat and keen. You are so amazingly descriptive, Mr. Wizard. You want to tell them what this really is? I'll tell you. It's half a chair, half a couch. Behold, the chaise lounge. Good for in the boudoir. And laying on it with an atomizer. Let's take a look at some of these chaise lounges through the ages. Dun, 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 dun. Here's a William and Mary day bed or chaise from around 1730. The wood is maple, there's no pillow, and it has a rush seat, and the support for the rush seating are from iron chains. Day beds were used more during colonial times than at any other period. This particular example was made in Pennsylvania. Hey, perhaps uh, George Washington slept here. Perhaps George Washington tried to sleep here. Now here's a federal Grecian couch, or recamier. This example comes from Salem, Massachusetts from around 1820. It's made of mahogany and aspen, and it's caned. And it's called a Grecian couch because the design is based on Greek forms, and it's an expression of the neoclassical style, which was very popular at the time, and still no pillow. Here's a fainting couch, or Eastlake daybed, based on Charles Eastlake's designs. It's from the late 19th century. The legs are oak, and it has a modern style upholstery and metal springs. So why is it called the fainting couch? Did you ever wear a corset? Here's an Art Deco chaise lounge from the 30s with tufted vertical pleats, silk upholstery, and fringe, which conceals the nice mahogany legs set on casters. Similar daybeds from the late 19th century were made with thinner arms like ours, and they were covered with more ornate fabric. This has also been called a Hollywood chaise or casting couch. You know, Howard Hughes had ten of these. So where did you find this one, Ed? Oh, this is the very famous Hervé Villachez. I think we all saw that one coming. Uh, back to Daddy Back now. to this. Our willing subject, this period piece of refuse, we're going to strip it bare, remove all of the uh, stuffing, all the padding, all the coils. And we're going to do a nice painted finish on the trim here. And later today on the show, we're going to tell you about the heartbreak of silicone infection. So... Let's, Let's get, get busy. busy. <laughs> Furniture on the Mend will return on TLC. Crafts and Company, weekdays at 12 and 3 on TLC. From Eureka Technology, the Victory Clean Air System. For powerful cleaning on and above the floor. The Boss, sleek, trim, powerful. Mega Boss 14-inch wide pad cleans faster. Boss and Mega Boss, both mega values only from Eureka. I cut my vitamin bill in half, thanks to Puritan's Pride. Great catalog. I saved over 50% on my vitamin purchase. Shopping with Puritan's Pride is like putting money back in your pocket. Hundreds of thousands of people are buying their vitamins, minerals, food supplements, and more from the pages of Puritan's Pride. Why? Just look at our fantastic two-for-one price. Imagine getting not one, but two bottles of C500 with rose hips, both for just $4.95. Two for the price of one. And look, buy one bottle of ginseng and get another free. Two for $6.25. I bought one bottle of lecithin and got another one free. Just $4.65 for two bottles. Buying from Puritan's Pride means you're buying direct from one of America's leading vitamin manufacturers and one of the largest. With over 30 years of manufacturing experience, we offer a tremendous variety of products. Hundreds of the finest vitamins, minerals, food supplements, and herbs, including the newest products nutritional science has to offer. We're so sure you'll be pleased with our sensational low prices Puritan Sprite offers you a full money-back guarantee on every purchase. That's right, a full money-back guarantee. Why not get the vitamins you need right from the source? With the assurance of value, freshness, variety, and convenience. A toll-free number makes ordering fast and easy. Hi, I'd like to order the natural vitamin C. For your free 96-page Puritan Sprite catalog, call this toll-free number now. There's no obligation. Puritan Sprite, the smart way to buy vitamins. Call now for your free Puritan's Pride vitamin catalog. Buy direct from the manufacturer and save. <laughs> Call 800-325-1212 for a free brochure and a $100 certificate toward your next vacation in Singapore, the most surprising tropical island on Earth. Hi, I'm Leah Feldon. There's something new on the Learning Channel, something exciting. It'll help you find a new look or improve on what you have already. And this is the best part. You won't have to spend a fortune or a month at the gym to do it. You'll get advice from the experts and celebrity guests and the people that make them look great. 
It's fun and practical, up to the minute, and timeless. It's simply style. Weekdays at 1 and 4 on TLC. Furniture on the Men now returns on TLC. All right, let's talk fabric. Let's. Why this fabric, you might ask? Well, it conforms to the uh, Victorian era of our piece here. And it shows up very nicely on TV. We like it. And half price sale, even better. Excellent. Now, a, a word about the strength of fabric, especially if you're a first timer, get as strong a fabric as you can because you're going to be pulling and tugging and tacking and nailing. And if it's a light silk or a cotton, it's going to rip. It's not going to forgive you. Right, but this you can tug at. Oh, That's very good. nice. Okay, we never did have a pillow for the chaise, so we are going to have to take that to an upholsterer and job it out, so to speak. That's what we call it in the business. Because this was Baron of Pillow, or Baron Von Pillow, who played with the Kaiser in the... Uh, oh, the, that was my line. The Great War. Yes, just never tell mind. them about the template. Okay, to make a new pillow, we're going to have to make a template. Like when you break a mirror, like you broke the, on the bureau. You're not going to let me forget no, and that? No, neither will they. All right, but in upholstery talk, we're going to have to call it a pattern. A patron. Okay. Ready to cut out our pattern. We've got some nice brown paper for it. You know, this paper smells good. Don't you remember we had a brisket in it? A brisket. Yeah. But first, we need some general measurements, length and width. Get our width measurement, 26. And the length is 56. 56. Now, we'll mark that off on our brown paper. And then we'll trace the rest using a pencil, forcing it into all the corners here and down at our rounded edge here. Very nice. What you got? You want 26, right? Measure 26 right there. 26. And another 26. Down here. Down this way. Well, there's our straights. Now, and get the, well, we the lengthwise to, one. I don't have a straight edge now. Which was 56. All the way in the back, bud. We don't have to force it. We're just getting our, our lengthwise measure. over this way would help. Now, the tape is crooked. Could you give me a pencil mark right here? I'll smack you. Show this one on TV. I'm telling you. Now we'll take our straight edge. Put the straight edge down. Right on here, so it's straight. And connect the dots. Was a big brisket. Very big brisket. <laughs> Just snoop. A little more. There we go. Now we want to trace. Pencil. Inside here with your pencil. Force in the corners. Try and get it back as tight as you can into the back here. Do we need two hands on this pencil? Yeah, I, I want this pencil. Okay, now. you can take over now. You might want to put the side of the pencil here. Still put a brisket in there. Think still in there. And tape. Our okay. pattern's made, and now it's time to start stripping the fabric. And make and sure when you do strip fabric and padding, you wear a dust mask because you're uncovering the ages, remember. Yeah, especially if something this old, it could be dust from Nebuchadnezzar. Right. Say that five times. Here's our tools. We've got the ever popular needle nose pliers. These are tack pullers. Right. These are what Nips. is this? Yeah. For good for pulling out. The stronger tax. Yeah, so a molars and the claw, and here's another more, one, and, and, and a more another. aged. Let us begin. So we're not going to use all of them together. No, no, because we are not octopi. Behold, the Naked Chaise. It's a Mickey Spillane novel. <laughs> yes. All right, what have we here? We have coil springs, the industry standard for many years. And they are tied. With heavy hemp twine. Heavy hemp twine. Yeah. Four ways. Now, uh, lengthwise and widthwise. Sometimes you'll see uh, coil springs tied eight ways. Well, that's, that's holding them 
from moving from side to side. Absolutely. And what keeps it from dropping out of the bottom is? Is? The webbing. Webbing, which, which is, is burlap. Underneath. Burlap comes in a roll like this here. Yes, and it's woven in and out just like those old potholders you made at camp. And yours never stayed together, I'll bet. Well, because I, I, didn't, I didn't tack them right. at the ends. And what we have down here is some twine that's woven in and out of the burlap and then, in turn, wrapped around each of those coil springs to keep the bottom from moving around. That's one method. Uh, we'll show you another method uh, in, a, in a future segment. And, and there's people that, that, that twine daily. Twine daily? Yeah. And abide that woman. Okay. Let's, let's flip this, flip this back over. And as you can see, where it's attached to the frame around the perimeter, this twine it's is tacked. tacked in. It's tacked in. Now, how do you know when to replace a spring or not? Show them an old well, one. Well, you and can a new see one. this is one of the springs out of the chaise, and it's kind of loose, and it doesn't have much spring. Spring, to because this. I can close it much easier than this, this one. This is a new spring. It's a little heavier gauge for a more firm surface, and oh, it's like a Mark Eden edge. Yeah. So in, now, sometimes you can just see which springs are depressed and need to be replaced. Like over here, what's that here? Well, uh, Fubsy owned this, I think. Look that word up, my friends. A lot of weight. Uh, but sometimes you can get away with just a few. But in order for a beautiful, firm, pristine platform and to watch me perspire heavily. Which I will enjoy greatly. We are going to replace every last spring, retie everything, and all new webbing. Are you ready? Let's, Let's begin. Okay, we have a bare frame now. Everything's gone. Now we have a big decision to make. Yeah, do we uh, redo something like this, or do you torch it? Let's redo it. We should Let's redo, redo it. it. Over the next three weeks, we're going to be putting webbing, springs, padding, fabric, buttons, you name it, and, of course, the pillow. But, you know, I cut myself, and I have a cramp, so why don't we go do our road trip now? Ooh, to the upholsterers. Yeah, big, big budget. budget. How you hey, doing? Yes. How you how doing? Are you? Nice Pretty to good. See you. Pretty good. How are you, Jerry? All right. How, how you doing? doing? All right. What can I do for you today? Yes. Well, we need to make a pillow here. Yeah. A That's pillow. Information for an old chaise. We got a, about a thirty-year-old French provisional chaise. Hmm. And here's the good. That nice. is gorgeous. That must have cost a bundle. Well, yeah. uh, we, we negotiated for yes. it, but that's really? another story. Oh, I'm glad to see. Well, okay, I'm a good negotiator, too. We, we got a template for you. Yeah, we brought the pattern. We the template? That we yeah. uh, measured. Template. What is this from? This is from uh, the, our old chaise lounge that we didn't have the original pillow, so we huge. had to cut it out. Yeah. yeah, there's not quite enough balance in it, but I probably could fix it up for you. you probably could. Real good. Now, you know, I smell something. <laughs> I can swear this smells like a brisket. Yes, well, that's <laughs> See, a, I told you. That's another I story. Told you. Never mind. That's oh another story. Gosh. Anyway, and we measured uh, widthwise and lengthwise and cut around the so curve. So you can use this. You can do something with this. Well, it will be a little difficult with our skill in our shop here. Yeah. I don't think we should have any trouble. Good. Now, what would you like in this? Would you like a specific stuffing? Well, we that's what we wanted to with the stuffing. Yeah, we wanted to talk about it. Maybe uh, is, mm. is uh, feathers still Down. being used? Down? Feathers. Yeah. Well, everything is being used. It's a question of economy. Mm. Yeah. Now, in what kind of position are you? Uh, very poor. Public very TV. Poor. Yes. Well, the basic economy is to use just a foam okay. slab. Yeah. With a wrap, four or maybe. five inches thick. Well, the next step up is with a wrap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Foam and with a wrap. would be foam with feathers with some kind of a down, which you don't think we need, right? No, I think... Fun, fun with okay. feathers? Oh, foam. Foam. Foam, foam, foam with, with feathers. Yeah. Feathers, I think, is going to be too high for us. So let's go with the foam with a Dacron wrap. Next, uh... According. Cording or well, welding? You mean welding? Welding, yeah. welding. Uh, cording. Two yards. Cording, a dressmaker says cording. Oh. Welding is, you know, macho. Yeah, kind of an insult a man. All right. How much would you need? About two yards will be fine. What are you doing, a kite? <laughs> no, no, we're not flying a kite. We're making a kite. <laughs> Plus, I need it for the inside, back, yeah, the outside. I'm just joking. Back. We'll give you three yards just to okay. make sure you That'd have enough. Great. Excellent. Okay, we'll really take care of you. And I hope All right, and can you have this uh, delivered? I we're really I stuck can. in the shop. I just hired a new guy. If he shows up, good luck. Yeah. I think that's it. Now it's lunch.
Yeah, well, let's go to lunch because I'm hungry. Okay, then. All Please, right, thank you very much. Is, okay, take it take easy. Care it's been a pleasure. Okay. okay, take care. Bye. Of yourself, guys. Bye. All right. Bye. Hold on. Furniture on the Mend will return on TLC. I cut my vitamin bill in half thanks to Puritan's Pride. I saved over 50% on my vitamin purchase. Shopping with Puritan's Pride is like putting money back in your pocket. Hundreds of thousands of people are buying their vitamins, minerals, food supplements, and more from the pages of Puritan's Pride. Why? Just look at our fantastic two-for-one prices. Imagine getting not one, but two bottles of C500 with rose hips, both for just $4.95. Two for the price of one. And look, buy one bottle of ginseng and get another free. Two for $6.25. I bought one bottle of lecithin and got another one free. Just $4.65 for two bottles. Buying from Puritan's Pride means you're buying direct from one of America's leading vitamin manufacturers and one of the largest. We offer a tremendous variety of products, hundreds of the finest vitamins, minerals, food supplements, and herbs, including the newest products nutritional science has to offer. Puritan's Pride offers you a full money-back guarantee on every purchase. So call now for your free 96-page Puritan's Pride catalog. Puritan's Pride, the smart way to buy vitamins. For 50 years, CARE has saved lives and helped millions help themselves. No agency of its kind has done more for more people more efficiently than CARE. It's time to CARE again. The Washington Post calls the human animal endlessly fascinating. A riveting, intelligent look at the descendants of apes. Widen your insight into the human condition. Desmond Morris's... Furniture on the Men now returns on TLC. All right, we're ready for our uh, finish now. We're going to do a distressed painted finish on the, on the chaise lounge. And this finish is different than the last distressing that we did where we beat up the window seat with the rusty objects and the chains in that we are distressing the actual paint. Now, what that means is we're going to lay over top of this original green paint that you can see here. It's in pretty good condition. We're going to sand, clean it down first with naphtha, sand it, and then we'll lay on a new primer, new oil-based primer, and two succeeding coats of gray, different gradations of gray. And then we'll eat into those, uh, those uh, layers of paint with some paste remover, and which will actually bubble the paint. And then we'll be able to scrape some paint off and reveal those undercoatings. The frame of the chaise is constructed of beech wood. Now, beech is native to uh, America. It's a hard, dense wood. It's used for flooring. It's used for uh, furniture in this case, a chaise lounge, and it's also used for some paintbrush handles. Now, it's a close grain, non-figurative wood, which means there's not a lot of heavy grain like an oak or a mahogany. And for that reason, it's usually painted or furniture industries, they mahoganize them or they make them look like cherry or they make them look like walnut by adding a liquid stain into a clear lacquer, thus making a pigmented lacquer. I washed the piece down with naphtha and a scrub brush. I sanded very well, and I applied a primer, a white oil-based primer into which I added some black to give me a gray color. And that's gonna give us our new foundation to put the seceding layers of gray on. There'll be two more layers of gray, which we will be distressing. Okay, sanding down the primer. You want it nice and clean, a nice surface or a tooth. So the next coat of paint to adhere to. Ready for the paint. See? A darker paint. A darker color, as they say, from my old hometown. Dab, dab, dab. Okay, about ready to put on our final coat of gray. It's going to be like a kind of a blue-gray. Goes real nice with the fabric. It looks just marvy on TV. Now you want to fold and get in these little flutes. These are called flutes. It's a fluted leg. We come in with our paint. See, isn't that a pretty color? So once this piece, this uh, coat dries, and we'll be ready for the distressing. You want to give it at least 24 hours to dry. There it is. All right, we have our three coats of paint on, and we have the green, the gray, and the light gray. Down, down, diddle, down, down, down. Oh, 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 oh. Down, down, diddle, down, down, down. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 
with those darn puckers. How many times has this happened to you? Well, you know, this is a very common problem with an old piece, especially after you strip it and you want to refinish it. Especially with those new silicone sprays, those easy spray-on polishes. The silicone gets into the pores of the wood yeah. and makes, it makes uh, recoating with a varnish after you've stripped and stained virtually impossible. So stop right there. What you got to do is uh, you got to clean this off first. That's what I have to do. And then we got to apply a spit coat. Now, spit coat, if you remember, is shellac. Talked about that before. And you want to apply, apply two or three coats on your, on your piece of uh, furniture. And we're going to use shellac, three pound cut. Remember, you buy that at a hardware store. It's a three pound cut shellac. You want to dilute it one part uh, shellac to about maybe five parts alcohol and brush that on after you've cleaned it off. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to clean this off. So uh, let's get Ed back. All right. This needs a spit coat. Yeah, I, you're very astute, you know. That's why I froze you. Get over there. Spit coat, you know what that is? Yeah, what is a spit it's coat? I told a... them already. I told them. I told them. I know what a spit coat is. Though. I know. It's it's uh, one part three pound cut right. to uh, five parts alcohol. This is, hey, good. I knew that. I knew that. Where was I? I don't know. Do you remember? So you got to strip it. Yeah. Clean it off. Well, see, there's another alternative, too. If you just want a low sheen, you can always rub the varnish in, just as you see this effect. Didn't he change his name from Estevez? Yeah. You can get this kind of effect and rub it on. That way, there'll be no puckering. The only time the puckering is going to occur is when you have a, a heavy-coated varnish applied straight from the can. That way, it's going to pucker because of those nasty silicone deposits. Well, this is some naphtha. And try and do this outdoors. We're in the shop here. We have ventilation and safety precautions and... This naphtha will clean off all that old varnish. That's right. There, that's good. Now it's all clean. It's all clean. Now comes the spit coating. My wonderful shellac jar. Just happened to have a bottle of it. Covered with shellac, yeah. And it's diluted. And what kind of brush? My favorite brush. It's a badger brush. And I'm gonna apply this. Now, that'll dry quite quickly yeah. because of all the alcohol in there. Now, I'm working this right into the pores. Now, if you want to stain, and there's another tip, you know, when you put an oil stain onto Give a, a table, the oil stain, the, uh, and then we'll put a second coat. And while we dry, let's take a trip up the Ganges. Black resin has been known since 1500 B.C., and it is the only resin of animal origin. Well, insect. The tiny insect is the size of a chicken louse, being about 1 25th of an inch in length. It only lives six to nine months, but what is a month to a bug? They swarm twice each year and pierce the softer twigs and branches of the trees and suck the sap into their tiny bodies and excrete a resinous substance through their even tinier body pores to form a crust on the twigs and branches. Of course, the female does all of the work during the lac-producing period, laying thousands of eggs until she has completely covered herself and her eggs with resin. The male is nowhere to be found, but is rumored to be of little concern to the bride anyway. Lac is gathered twice each year, in April and November, and it is taken to a crude mill to be crushed, sifted, and sorted from the sticks and bodies of the little rascals. It is then washed, melted, sheeted, reheated, and stretched to very thin sheets, which are in turn broken up into tiny flakes that are bagged and shipped worldwide. The greater portion of shellac is still produced by primitive means, unchanged since the days of Marco Polo, who once was reported to have exclaimed, hey, get of these bugs out of my linguine, waiter. Look at that, a couple coats of shellac, sand it down lightly, lightly with some 400 paper, a first coat of varnish laid down, some dust is in there, but uh, no puckering at all. Not at all. Thanks to the uh, wonder of shellac. And to our diminutive crushed critters who gave their, their lives so that we can have... Shellac flakes, just like this. Hey, next week, be with us, because on our chaise, we'll be doing springs and webbing. Oh, and what am I doing? I can't remember. You're going, you're going to do the distressing. Distressing and we're going to visit. And we're going to visit a showroom chock full of antique furniture. Mm. So until then, this is Ramar Ed. And Buona Joe saying, be, be nice, nice to your, your furniture. furniture.